To enter. He performed for Shakespeare? Really? Good evening and welcome to day 28 of the 100 Days of Shakespeare event. Great to have you back. If you were here for the first time, hello, my name is Paul Adams from Small Crown Productions. We are taking part in a 100 Days of Shakespeare event uh, started by Carolina Furman, part of the Society for Creative Anachronism. Later on, when you've finished watching videos, there is a link in the description uh, to a Facebook group that you can head to to uh, check that out. And I'm just checking to make sure my microphone is on because I've done a couple of these where the mic was muted. So just making sure... I'm not muted. Um, so tonight, um, we are looking at a brief look at the life of Ben Jonson, another one of Shakespeare's contemporaries. So the purpose of the event is to investigate Shakespeare's lifetimes, his contemporaries, his work, and the work of other people to get a sense of what he was living and what he was dealing with around that time. So tonight, we're looking at um, Ben Jonson's life. Tomorrow, we will look at a synopsis of Every Man in His Humour, one of Johnson's um, kind of most famous plays. And then the following night, we'll actually look at another of his plays called The Alchemist, which is probably his other most famous play. So we'll just do a brief synopsis of those two. Um, and um, once this live stream's done and those videos up, I will link those at the back end of this video as well. So uh, let's jump into Ben Johnson. So, uh, born in 1575, his father died a month before he was born. Now, his father had actually gone to prison. He was arrested and uh, he was actually the subject of a forfeit. And so, therefore, when he came out of prison, all of their land was stripped from them. They're basically pretty poor. And then his father died a month before Johnson was born. So, uh, obviously, you know, that made it a little bit of a harder start for him in life, but he was put through school by a family friend. And uh, we know that he went to St. Martin's and he went to the parish school and that he also went to Westminster School, where he was mentored by William Camden, uh, who was a notable poet at the time as well. Now, he was planning to go to university, but ended up having to go and work as a bricklayer's apprentice for his stepfather. He hated that, apparently, and so he left and joined the military. And there is an account of him, uh, I'm not sure who wrote it, and it's just popped into my mind, so I'll say it. It'd be something for you to possibly go and research a little bit yourself if you're interested. There is an account of a writing of um, describing Johnson actually killing a man in battle, uh, which which was um, recorded. So, um, yeah, so he, uh, he went and joined the military, did that for a while, and came back. Now, in 1597, at the age of 22, Johnson was working with Henslow um, as part of the Admiral's Men, and he was performing under Henslow's management at the Rose Theatre. Now, he performed and wrote for the company, um, and I'm going to read this because in the prologue of his last unfinished play called The Sad Shepherd, he actually wrote a little bit about himself. Um, and so what, what is that? Uh, he that has feasted you these 40 years and by 1597 at latest, his connection with the stage had begun. So he confirms this for us himself uh, towards the end of his life that he had gotten his start in the theatre around 1597. Now, interestingly, there are some other people out there that have written about Johnson in his early days. And uh, one of them was a, a gentleman by the name of Aubrey, who wrote this. Um, he acted and wrote, but both ill at the Green Curtain, a kind of nursery or obscure playhouse somewhere in the suburbs, I think towards Shoreditch or Clerkenwell, and that he was never a good actor, but a good instructor. 
So interestingly, he got bagged out quite a bit for his acting skills, but he became obviously quite a good writer. In 1598, 1599, he wrote his first kind of smash play, which was called Every Man in His Humour. And that is the play that we'll chat about tomorrow night. We'll go through the synopsis of that play so you can get a sense of what it's about. Harkens a little bit back to some of the old classics. Um, Ties in this idea of the humours that we've talked about. If you're not sure what the humours are, I'll link up the five-minute video I did on the humours here so that you can go and check that out later as well and have a bit more knowledge around what the humours were and how they played into everyday life in the Elizabethan world. But 1598, 1599, this play was performed, and it went very, very well. Uh, He later went on to write um, Volpone, The Alchemist, and a couple of other plays. Well, actually, quite a few plays. He had quite a a big career. Now, one of the other big things that were happening, you know, still around this time, were the, the court masks. And Johnson became quite adept at writing masks for the court. And between 1605 and 1612, eight out of the 10 court masks that were performed were written by Ben Johnson. So that's that's quite amazing, the fact that he wrote eight out of the 10 court masks. That would have actually been really good for him too financially because they would have paid him for that. Um, but what a way to build your notoriety p- producing for the court. Unbelievable. So uh, by this time, he had written The Alchemist in about 1610. And there is a record of Shakespeare performing in in that play in 1616. Sorry, no, not in that one. In Every Man in His Humor, Shakespeare performed in that in 1616. Um, Now, in 1616, Johnson was also granted a pension of 100 marks a year. And um, he's actually also identified as England's first poet laureate. So um, he he rose to be, despite Aubrey's initial thinking of him, to be quite a prominent writer. Now, in 1616, was it was a massive year for Johnson. He also published a folio of his works up until that time. Now, this was unusual for a playwright, and it was the first of its kind to be produced by a living playwright in the style that he did. So the style that he released the folio in was actually a similar style to that, um, which was used for kind of the classic writers like Plautus and Aristophanes, and collected works, uh, a folio of their works. So there, there had been plays printed and folios printed of, of players and, and playwrights, but this was the first of its kind in that he kind of treated it like he was one of the greats in the way that he produced it. So I think that's quite fascinating that he backed himself that much. Um, Just absolutely fascinating. So um, he purchased a share in the Lord Admiral's Men uh, of Henslow and uh, became a partner in that crew there as well. And the last sort of 20 years of his life, there, there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of, um, of, of uh, reference that I can find right now uh, about what he was doing, but he was, he was still writing. Um, I, I, I'm not quite sure exactly where he was living. I'm sure there is a record of it. I just haven't dug in and found it yet. So there's definitely still more for me to learn as well. Um, Johnson's not a playwright that I've actually really ever dug into um, before now. So uh, I'm learning quite a bit through this as well, which has been fantastic. Like There's been some amazing stuff coming out. But um, this has been really fascinating for me to learn that that Johnson was actually such a key influence of writing in this period. So he actually died in 1637. So that makes him 62 when he died. So again, you can see that sense of getting in early at a young age, throwing himself in, and he he actually went on and, and did quite amazing things. So the longevity of his life obviously played a big part in his success. When you look at, you know, uh, was it Marlowe died at 29, albeit being stabbed in the face, oh, forehead. Um, um, uh, Thomas Kidd dying at 35, you know, had some great hits with plays. What could they have written had they lived? So I'm actually 
putting a timeline together of all the playwrights uh, that were really prominent in this period. So we can kind of see that period of when they were born compared to when they all died and just get a sense of that collectively in one thing. So uh, that's something I'm still putting together. So that'll be an episode that I do later down the track. So there you go. A little bit of a brief history about um, Ben Johnson. So much more to him than I realized. He wasn't just another you know, average playwright that had a couple of hits. This guy, he was up there smashing it out of the park. So fascinating guy. Can't wait to dig a little bit more into him. But like I said, tomorrow night, uh, we will look at um, every man in his humor. And then the following night, we will look in the next video at The Alchemist. And I will uh, link those up once they are released here. But until then, check out one of these other videos and learn a little bit more about Shakespeare while you're here. And I will see you tomorrow. Oh, 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 like the video, subscribe to the channel. See you tomorrow. Thanks.